Shall I'll be right there. Help. <laughs> I don't do math. I don't speak math. So. Anyway, my office at Northern State University, we are responsible for what the state of South Dakota calls self-support. Um, we're not funded by the state of South Dakota. We get no monies to operate our programs. And dual credit, which is a rather huge umbrella, uh, also falls within my office to deal with registrations, coordinating the classes, and doing all the fun paperwork that has to get done for our programs. Where did we go? Is that what you wanted? The slide, I'm sorry. I was That's ready okay. for the next slide. My staff, uh, Tiffany Dykeman and Tara uh, Sancher, they're the two young ladies that work with me at Northern State University. Uh, so if you call our office, chances are you're going to talk to one of them. Um, but I'm also available. We all just kind of tag team everything. Dual credit, as I said, dual credit is a big umbrella. At Northern State University, we have two dual credit programs. One is the Rising Scholars. That's the program that most of your students here at Brandon Valley are going to be involved in. The other is high school dual credit that is sponsored by the state. There are some subtle differences. Rising Scholars dual credit is taught here in Brandon Valley High School by your normal high school teachers but they meet the requirements to be a Northern State University teacher or a faculty member. Means they've got a master's or a master's degree in the field that they're teaching. So biology is taught by... Mr. Lovren. <coughs> Mr. Lovren. Mr. Lovren. So Mr. Lovren has a master's degree in biology and he would be approved to teach at Northern State University. So that's a huge difference in the other program. Uh, the tuition rate for Rising Scholars is $40 a credit hour. And the textbooks and materials are typically paid for by the high school. So your students don't have to pay for anything other than the $40 per credit hour tuition. The high school dual credit is a little different. Those are either online classes, they are at our campus. Uh, we also offer classes at Huron uh, Community Campus and a couple of other locations. So those are typically taught by our faculty. Again, they're either taught online or they're taught face-to-face -face at those locations. And I know there are a few students here at Brandon Valley that do take the dual credit. Uh, the tuition rate for those classes is $48.33 per credit hour. So it's a little bit more expensive, but that's what the state says dual credit students have to pay. And then the books and materials and those kinds of things students are responsible for for those classes. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the dual credit program. If you do have questions about that or your students are interested in that, please see me after we're done. I am more than happy to answer your questions about the dual credit program. There is a schedule in your packet that is for the dual credit. Those would primarily be online for students <laughs> here in the Brandon Valley area. And if it's okay if I if I cut in, this is for the students especially. This is when we we distinguish the difference between talking to Mrs. Murdy about Board of Regents dual credit and talking to myself about Rising Scholars. So if you want to do the off-campus dual credit, that's Mrs. Murdy. If you want to do the Rising Scholars, that's where I'm your contact. If you get confused, just come to me and I'll help you. We'll get you there. Yep. 
Some, a new development in our Rising Scholars Program, uh, May 1st, Here. May 1st, uh, Northern State received accreditation from an organization, uh, an organization called uh, National Alliance for Concurrent Enrollment Programs. It means your students who are taking these classes, if they choose to leave the Board of Regents, they will have a better than average chance of getting those credits transferred out of state. Anything your student takes here as high school dual credit or rising scholars <laughs> is transferable to any of the Board of Regents schools. They have to take them. That's Board of Regents policy. But if you leave the state and go to another school, there's no guarantee that those credits are gonna transfer. With this accreditation, there's a better than average chance that they will transfer. Less of a problem. Um, your students who register for these classes, we will treat them as Northern State University College students, even though they may be a junior or senior here. When they are in the class, they are our student. Okay. So they still follow the same rules and regulations that our Northern State University students follow. All of the courses are transcripted. So I had a young lady call me from another school last week or a week before, upset that we sent her high school the transcript for the Rising Scholars course she took in her school because she earned an F. Well, I didn't want that I didn't want that sent to my high school. That's not how it works. If it's a Rising Scholars class, at the end of the term, we will send your grades back here to Mrs. Stemplatt and she will then process them into the system, and your grade will reflect accordingly. And FERPA. Um, the Family and uh, Educational Rights and Rights Act. This gets a little sticky. Now, on the registration form that you all fill out and we require the student to sign it and the parent to sign it and the stem level and if it's a high school dual credit form miss Murdy. miss Murdy will sign it when the student signs that they are giving a FERPA release to us which means we can talk to you about certain things about your students' activities at Northern. We won't discuss their progress within the class or what their grades are. You want to know what they're registered for, you want to help get them registered, that kind of thing, how much they owe, we'll talk to you all day long. But when it actually gets to the academic stuff, that's when our faculty really don't want to have those kinds of conversations with parents. They want to talk to your student. But again, sorry, I'm getting off track. Rising scholars look different. They're teachers. Um. I would say that's one of the benefits of rising scholars is that you do have the contact right here that does make contact with the parents. There is that communication versus some of you you know, you have older children in college, and you know that communication, you can't do that. They can be going to class, and if they don't tell you, you're never going to know. Okay? Right in college is a little bit different because they're our faculty, and you can see that grade in Skyward just like you can any other grade. The off campus dual credit is where it gets a little tricky. Great. They can, they can, talk, to the, they can talk to the high school faculty because it's the high school credit there. Rising Scholars registration process. Um, there is a form that your student will need to fill out and submit. It goes through a system called FormStack. If you haven't seen it yet, Yes. Right. This is the registration form. 
you go through, you fill this up. A lot of it's fill in the blank. Some of it's uh, kind of click through stuff. And it may make me fill this out and get it where I want to be. says high school, you click on that, it's going to give you a drop down menu, you pick Brandon Valley, and then down below it's going to give you the courses that are available here at Brandon Valley. And if you look out to the right of each of those courses, it gives you the tuition amount for that course. Notice down there at the bottom where it says Brandon Valley tuition total, it's calculating and telling them what the tuition is for all the courses that you're selecting. Now I will show you later on in WebAdvisor where you can see the, uh, the total, but last year there were a lot of questions about how much is my kid, oh, how much is their bill? It will tell you here. Uh, when you submit it, 
the bottom of the page, you click the submit button, your student is going to get an email. And if you look in the packet, in that uh, staple packet that has the PowerPoint slides to it, like the third page in, it has what the email might look like. Depending on your email server, Yahoo, Gmail, whatever it is that it's coming to, it might look a little different. But when you print it, it should print on two pages. So you need to print that email. Your student signs at the bottom in the student signature. A parent and or guardian signs in their spot. Your student then needs to bring that page to Ms. Simwell, and then she will take it from there. She will sign it and send that document along with your student's transcript and test scores and other things that we need in my office to actually process the registration. This is not an immediate process by any means. It takes time for us to get through all of our processes and actually get your student registered into their classes. Once we register them, your student will get the second email that's in that packet. And it should say something to the effect of Northern State University Rising Scholars Registration Confirmation. That's telling you your student is now registered for the classes that they had requested. In the bottom of that email are the steps for setting up their Northern State University email account. They have to set that up first. Because the next step in the process is to set up their web advisor account. You have to have the Northern email because part of the process is when you're setting up WebAdvisor, they're going to send an email to your Northern account that tells you what your initial password is for your WebAdvisor account. That makes sense. Weird, but that's just how the board brings itself. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. So once you get that email, it's uh, basically you're done until August 1st. August 1st is when your bill will be posted to the student account and web advisor. And that's when you can pay your students tuition for the Rising Scholars class. Now there are a multitude of ways you can pay your you can mail a check to Northern State University Finance Office. And I believe that's in one of the slides. WebAdvisor, and I'm going to show you what WebAdvisor looks like here in a minute. I'm going to log into my account to let you see kind of what it looks like. But within WebAdvisor, they can see their class schedule. Now this will be the classes through Northern, and only the Northern classes. It's not going to show their whole brain and balance schedule. Uh, attendance confirmation. It is a process that any normal student at a Board of Regents school must complete in the fall and again in the spring. We don't require Rising Scholar students to complete this process. You might as well, you're there, you're in WebAdvisor, and it's a, to get into good practice. 
because if you're going to go on to the Board of Regents, when you graduate, you're going to have to do this process. So while we don't require it, we highly encourage students to do it. It is basically a, hey, yes, I am still coming to Northern State University. Do account balances, uh, make payments, and do grades. At the end of the term, once your grades are posted in the system, you'll be able to see what you're going to be posted on your transcript. Um, make payments. As I said, there are several ways you can make payments. One is you can mail a check or a money order to the Northern State University Finance Office. <coughs> Please write your student's full name in their student ID number, which is like a six digit number, it typically begins with a seven. When we send you the registration confirmation email, their student ID will be on that email. or social security number. We need one of those two. Last year I had a parent send in the check, but they didn't write the student's name or any identifying information about the student. And the student's name does not match the parent's name. We finally tracked the parent down and found out who the student was and we got the monies posted to their accounts. But please make sure you put that information on ways to get to WebAdvisor. One is on our home page at the very bottom of the page like I'm doing now. You scroll down, you click WebAdvisor, and then you go through the login process. Oh, that's a problem. Terry's doing that, I will talk about the other payment options. When you get into WebAdvisor, there's a place to see your bill. You open it up and it'll give you an itemized line by line what you're being charged for. If it looks weird, like $900, boy, you think it should be a $120 course, please don't flip out. Call my office. We'll take a look at it. It's probably a coding error somewhere in our system. Usually it doesn't happen too much on the Rising Scholars courses, but some of those dual credit courses, they get a little twitchy. So uh, again, if you have questions about your bill, call my office. My staff will work with you. We'll figure it out and we'll get it set to where it's supposed to be. On that page, there is a link to pay your bill. It will open up the pay your bill page. You have two options electronically. One is an electronic check. You punch in your routing number, your account number, and how much you're going to pay, and a couple of other bits of information. Click submit, you're done. A few days from now, you'll get an email or you'll get a transaction that says tuition paid in full. Or just a little balance with the balance is. There is no charge for that. 
You also have the opportunity to pay by credit card, which also includes debit cards. However, the state of South Dakota says we can't eat the charge for processing that credit card payment. If we were a normal business like Menards, I use Menards, my wife works there. Um, whatever the transaction fee is, that business just eats that cost. It's part of doing business. We work for the state of South Dakota. They say you can't do that. So there is going to be a small 2 3% charge that gets tacked on to whatever that payment is. So just be aware there is a little bit of a charge that goes for using credit cards, debit cards. So that's pretty much payment options. <clears throat> Please do not mail cash. Mailing cash is bad. We get cash in the mail all the time. I get students that send me a thousand dollars in cash. Oh my God! What, are you, what were you thinking? Post office. Where are we at? No go? Well, are we in? Oh, that would be perfect if you well. He has no charges. Okay. That's always good. I, I always get a little squeamish letting other people walk in because if there's something they didn't want people to see, it's like <laughs> if they saw my grades, it wouldn't matter. If you're a rising scholar, student, please do not sign up for our campus alerts. Otherwise, you're going to get the alert that says, hey, Northern State University is closed today. Brandon Valley High School may not be closed, or vice versa. So please don't sign up for ours uh, unless you're coming to our campus. Otherwise, you're going to get the zillion alerts that really aren't going to apply to you. Might freak you out. Over there. Alright, so we come into your menu. That's at the end of the year. You can go click that off, print that, give that to your parents for tax purposes. There are tax credits for paying tuition dollars. So make sure you pull that off at the end of December. Financial aid does They, they don't, if they did that, this bill could be 
would have to kill a tree to print it. Any questions on WebAdvisor, paying the tuition? Yes, ma'am. From my perspective, the sooner the better. letting you know when you need to get the forms to her. Now, from my end, as soon as you click the submit button, my staff is going to start doing some processing in our office. We're going to add your student to our student information system. We're going to have them prepped and ready for registration. That when Ms. Dimwettle emails me their registration form, it says register these students. We'll do them in a couple of days and the emails will start going out to your students telling them that they're registered. Now, when does when does class start here? August. August, yeah, I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> the twenty fourth? Yeah. Okay, close enough. If you don't have something from us around August twenty second. Then you might want to contact Ms. Stemwell or Harry or my office and inquire. But by that time, we should have pretty much everybody processed that's going to be registered, except for a few stragglers. But I know some students are still taking Accuplacer, ACT exams, and things like that that they need to qualify for the different classes. That high school class does not drop you from Northern State University's red rolls. Okay. You have to fill out an add drop form that says, I've decided I'm not going to take this biology class for college credit anymore. I'm going to sit in Mr. Lovren's biology class, but I'm just going to do it at the high school level. I don't want the credit even though you've already asked us to register you for it. You have to tell us to drop you from that class. Otherwise, at the end of the term, we're going to send a notice saying, where's the student's grade? And then it gets really ugly at that particular point in time. Also, just stop going to class doesn't drop you from your classes for going to You really have to tell us that you're dropping the class and that you want us to remove being registered for the class. Uh, right. Important dates. That's them. If you're going to drop the class, you need to drop it by that date. If you decide later in the term, maybe I'm not doing as good as I wanted. I really don't want this on my transcript forever. College transcript is forever. Uh, if you go to another school, this transcript will somehow follow you, I promise. Uh, so if you want to withdraw from the class, you've got to do it by that date. Otherwise, you could end up with a W, F. W for a withdrawal, F as a failure rate. Those look just as bad as your transcripts as that. Mind, those are three very important things within the board of regents of the that you have to apply with. We're almost 
their contact information. <coughs> Ms. Piatz is the director of the Rising Scholars Program at Northern. Ms. Stemuddle is your point of contact here. And of course, you have finance office, questions about your bill. If you have problems getting into your web advisor account or your email set up, please call the help desk. My staff is pretty good at things that are not technical nature, but problems with your systems is not one of our areas of expertise. And of course, you have my office number there. Questions? <coughs> oh, come on, I can't be that good. Within the Board of Regents system, if your student is at multiple schools, and within the high school dual credit program, Rising Scholars, that is not uncommon. Um, whoever registers them first is what we call their home location. So for most of your students, Northern is going to be their home location. Once they set up their accounts, Northern is it. The web advisor, other systems, their board of regions wide. So they log into one, they log into all. But the emails, again, you know, we do have students that call and say, you know, I don't want Northern to be my home institution anymore. I want USD to be my home institution. Not a problem. We make a phone call to USD, we flip their home location. Their logins are not going to change. Because once we issue that six digit ID number that begins with a seven, that's their number for life. You leave college, you come back in 20 years from now, that is the same ID number you're gonna have. Other questions, please. That's why I'm here. Well, I just want to say one thing on the registration form. Uh, it's gonna ask for your student's social security number. Some people don't like to give that. So there is an option to not give the social security number, although the system is secure. But um, if, you check, if you check, no, I don't want to give the social security number, then you're still going to get a letter from our um, finance director, our controller, because they have to have the social security number so that they can get the IRS form, which is the uh, 1098 for the tuition. So either way, you're probably going to have to get the social security number at some point. And I just want to say that the system is secure. And, um, and and so you know that's up to you still. So we don't man, you know, we can't um, like mandate they can give it, but eventually you are going to have to give it. So it's kind of a <coughs> And when you're looking at that part of the registration form, as Carrie said, it is protected. In fact, the data is encrypted. The only people that can see that data are the people in my office, and they have to do it from my office with a secure password. So your, your information is protected. Again, it's like anything else. I can't swear that some weave out there doesn't have anything better to do than to figure out how to hack a 512-bit hack. But that's always possible. Um, if you don't provide your social security number, and again, as Terry said, we can't make you. Uh, the finance office will send three attempts to collect the social security number. After that, we will just put in the files. The student refused to give their social security number. The IRS may want to have a chat with you in the future because there are penalties for not providing your social security number for the 1098 team. Because every year, Northern has to submit to the IRS, here are all the students that paid tuition, how much they paid in tuition, and if we don't have your student's social security number, it will go into cyberspace out there and the IRS gets all freaked out. 